Hi everybody, thank you for coming to my channel. This is Wendy and today I wanted to show you a little mini journal that I made. Uh, it's out of playing cards and I thought I'd show you a quick th flip through of it and then show you how I made it. Uh, I was playing around with the cards and just thought I would share. So here is the front and it, I just love this little tail. I put a little uh, netting on it so it just wraps around let me unwrap it and it's hooked to the back so here is the front and then here's the spine it has three signatures in it here's the back so let me open this up so it's pretty basic um i you know for it being tiny you know, I didn't want to pack it too full. So here's just a, a fun little card, journal journal spot. And I put some random clusters and um, a fun little brad in there. And then I have a couple uh, note cards with some spots on the back. So, and there's little tags, but these are all pretty, you know, scrapbook paper. And I just kind of left it you know, let the paper speak for itself. Let's see. Um, and then I have another little tag here and a little tuck spot. There's the, there's the rest of the queen card. So and I put a little tissue paper in, but three signatures, little booklet. I thought it was fun. I put a little tab here and this is just a little a uh, little journal book and I just slid that onto one of the pages and this is about it and then this back side this is just a belly band and this has some little scrap notebook and then like I said this is attached so you just wrap it around and I just tuck it in and it's done. So that is the playing card journal. <laughs> so I thought I would show you how I did it. So you need some playing cards, at least three. Uh, more if you have them for decorating purposes. And I am using the hearts this time. Uh, you do need a nail file or a sanding uh, piece of uh, soft grade sanding paper purely if you want to um this is just to help age it because these are brand new cards so um what i do is i rub the uh nail file on it to kind of scuff it up it also helps the uh glue to adhere better and also when you ink it it will uh make it look a little bit more aged so i kind of just go across both sides with my <laughs> who knew a nail file <laughs> emery board whatever you want to call it and just kind of rough up rough, rough up the surfaces of it and then I like to go ahead and ink them which I will do right now so you can kind of see what it looks like. I am using Distress Ink. What is this one? Oh, Vintage Photo. <laughs> I had to look. I couldn't tell what it was. So I would get the edges. And then maybe rub some in on the... And I also, I like to add a dab of color to mine too. Um, since I'm going with a red theme, I'll probably use some red ink as well. Because I want them to look, I want them to look pretty aged up here. So what I'll do is I'll come in with my pigment ink. And I do have a, just a makeup sponge. And what I'll do is I will 
kind of add some just random sometimes I like it dark in spots and I'll do it for my queen all right okay after you get your cards inked and you know colored how you want them what you do is you pick out what you want your spine to look like I wanted to make sure you could see you know the image so what I did was I picked out a card that had you know the let's say the hearts you see in the center because if you did like a seven you only have one all right and then sixes you don't have anything so just kind of remember that if you want to show up on the spine so what i did was this is the front this is the back this is going to be my spine i went ahead and scored and folded um until this was three-fourths of an inch okay this is only three-fourths of an inch is the width so I have, what is that, seven eighths of a lip on each side. So basically, you just want to get that center to show. All right. So, and I folded it both ways. You know, I got them creased really good. So then the next thing is you're going to glue these right on to the lips of or the edges of the spine core uh, card okay so when you fold it this is going to be right up to the edge now mind you this isn't like a true junk journal where you know you're going to have gaps and you know so it folds better this is just a little card journal so i butted it right up to the edge because i wanted this more of a novelty journal so if you glue them like this right in there okay on both sides let me glue mine and then I will show you the next step okay after you have these glued in place it should look like this okay then you have these glued next you want to pick out some cardstock I have some heavy duty cardstock and you want to pick out your color and that's going to be the frame around the cards so that's going to show on the outside and it will show of course on the inside uh, unless we cover it so what i like to do is i just get me out a big enough piece that i will leave a frame around so i want about this much all the way around and actually actually let me change that. I'm going to go here because I like that torn raggedy edge. So what I'll do is I will tear. <laughs> Cardstock really gives you that really nice torn look. So I will just do that. And of course you don't have to tear it. You know, just cut it however you know whatever your style is let me get this anyway after you get the this trimmed down to the size that you like you're going to glue it in place fully like this then i recommend letting it dry really good and then of course we have what we call breaking in the spine so you want to refold your book let me get, sorry guys, let me get the torn edge. A little bit more torn than I wanted. Hold on, maybe I can just pinch it off. Yeah, I'm using this as I think more of a, to include in one of my journals or just a little ephemera gift happy mail something like that okay so that's what i will have and i will glue this in place and pretty much leave it here i guess for a good 15 minutes i know it's good and then what you're going to want to do is re-break in the spine and uh re-break it all in so it closed you know closes like it's supposed to 
All right, so I will come back when I get that done. Okay, once this is dry, dried and you worked your uh, book closed, you might want to ink up some of these edges or you might need to add a little bit more glue if you didn't get all the way to the edges. Okay, so after that, what I do is I cut me out an additional, pe oops, you can't see it, an additional strip of cardstock that fits in this spine and I glue that in just to have a little bit extra durability. I know there's a playing card here and that's pretty, you know, sturdy for what this is. I just, I feel more comfortable if I add an additional layer right there on the spine and that's all I do. And I, I glue that in and let that dry. And as you're doing that, I also, uh, I with this one, I didn't do a card. Instead, I was adding um, cardstock for a pocket. But I think adding um, another, you know, a, another piece of paper, be it cardstock, scrapbook paper, or a playing card, will make this just a little bit more firmer, and it won't kind of like you know, curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue in these two playing cards, which I have prepared. Uh, I already inked and scratched them up <laughs> so they will glue. So what I'll do is I will glue these in as well, just like this, as uh, the spine is being glued in. So then I'll have those. But do not forget, if you want a ribbon for a closure, <laughs> almost forgot that. If you want a ribbon for a closure, don't forget to glue it in between the, let me make sure I'm on the back. Okay, so the back card or whatever you're gonna glue here, make sure you glue the ribbon down and then glue whatever paper you're gonna put on top over it. So this is locked into place, okay? Don't forget that. If you guys wanna know how long my ribbon is, I don't know, I kinda just eyeball it, it is, well, there's 12, about 20 and a half inches, <laughs> because I like it to go around twice on, you know, the book. So don't forget to glue in your ribbon as well. And so let me get these all glued into place and we'll go to the next step. Okay, hopefully you've got your cards or your paper glued in, the extra spine glued in, and you got your ribbon glued in. Uh, I went ahead and just added a piece of pretty paper to do a little pocket there. So, but that's up to you. I'm going to leave the decorating up to you guys. So, but let me tell you, I have, oops. Uh, basically, I put three signatures together, okay? I did three signatures, and they are, uh, which I'm sure you guys can figure it out, but, you know, I just used a playing card and made it a little smaller than a playing card, but mine ended up being, like, five, a, a little, about five inches by three and a half. Okay, and you know, I just folded them in half, and oh, and I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, I did five. Uh, some of this is the cheaper, you know, lighter scrapbook paper, almost like copy paper, and then I have a couple pieces of the heavier duty or cardstock, because, you know, that's what I got. So, oops. So I did three signatures. Now, what I do is I use my Big Bite Crocodile. And actually, I just layer these because there's not that many. Okay. And I will put three holes right down the center. Let me see my pen. So I'll do three holes. And I kind of just, for this, I'll just estimate it here. They don't need to be too far. So that's what I'll do. I just, you know, kind of eyeball it and, you know, put them in there. So hold on, I'll put the holes in. And same thing here, after you get 
uh, your holes picked, what I do is I lay this down and just draw my circles down the center. I'll show you in a second. Hold on, guys. Okay, I went ahead and punched the holes real quick. So what I do is one of these, I'll flip over and put it into the center. Oops. Put it into the center, and then I will just mark where I want my holes at for here. So once I have those three, I can just eyeball it, really, and see where I want the other two at. You guys can measure it all out, you know, uh, with your ruler and everything. But like I said, this is just a little bitty... It's pretty easy to eyeball it. And then what I'll do is I'll come back here with my crocodile and I'll just punch the holes and I will show you what I do next. So you can see I have three holes across, nothing fancy. And Hopefully you guys know how to do the pamphlet stitch. Uh, if not, there's some great tutorials out there. I'll try to show you how I do it. Um, but I have some just black nylon cording, okay, with a big, uh, you know, needle. So what I do is I like to do the center signature first, which will be... The one with the red. Okay, so what I'll do is make sure I have. Yep. Okay, so I go from the inside and go through that center hole and then come up or down, it doesn't, which, whichever way direction. So I go to the top hole. And then you go through, oops, and then you come all the way down to this hole. Oh, make sure you get it in the center. And then pull that through. And then you come back into that center hole. And I usually like to make sure my, okay. Well, dang it. I just lost my... <laughs> Hold on. I just lost my thread out of my needle. Okay. So you come back up to the center. And then... Let's see here. So I'm not all... I had too much of a length on it. Okay. So basically you give it a good tug and then tie it in a knot a couple times. I usually do two times for this. These hold the knots pretty darn good. And then I cut it. And then the center one is in and I usually kind of pinch it and get it good and worked. So the next one, normally, I should show you guys the proper way because I am using a long string, but normally it's three times the length. So you go one, two, three, and then you give it a little cut. You thread your needle, and I got this huge honking darning needle. All right, so then you go to the next one. Either side does not matter. I just want to make sure I have the proper. All right, so you go into the front or in from the inside center hole, and then you pull it and hold on to the end so you don't lose it. And then you go up to the top, go through both layers, then come down to the bottom. Bottom hole, go through both layers. 
I don't get it stuck. Uh, hold on. All right. Pull and then come back up through that center hole. And this line, this piece of thread here, I usually have one end going on one side and one going on the other and then tie it. So then give it a couple good yanks and then tie. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. <laughs> Once you watch it on a, there's a ton of videos out there that show really good up close uh, uh, pictures. I just don't have the setup to do close-ups and step outs yet. <laughs> I will. So continue doing that and go ahead and add in your third one. I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, you should have your pamphlets, uh, your signatures sewn in. Uh, I don't know if I, I can't remember if I told you. It was, it's called a pamphlet stitch. Uh, and it's pretty easy and it's just basic. And these are actually these smaller uh, projects are a great way to practice that. I mean, it's nothing hard at all. Anybody can do it. Especially if I can't, anybody can do it. Because <laughs> I used to, when I first started, preferred sewing my signatures in with a sewing machine. And then uh, my signatures got too big and wouldn't go into my sewing machine. So I started doing the pamphlet stitch as well as some other methods. But okay, so <laughs> once those are in, you are ready to decorate your book and add your pockets and whatnot. But uh, I did have somebody ask me how I did the little tail. And so let me show you guys what I did. I just have some black, I guess you call it tulle or uh, netting. Can you guys see that? That's all that is. Um, so I have just a swatch here <laughs> and I just pull it like this, like, um, like you're doing, you know, scrunching up a bowl. And all I do was tie the end, I'll tie the ribbon around the end and add a little glue so the ribbon and the tool would stay. So let me tie that. And one more knot. Something just very simple and just gives it enough pop that I really <laughs> I just really like that little tool tail um, I add a little dab of glue uh, my silicone fabric glue and then tie it tight and then you have a tail so it'll go one two and then I just usually tuck it through and then I'll, and I'll dangle. And that is it. Um, I will leave the decorating to you guys. I normally just use up what I can, uh, what I do. I'm using the same theme, you know, red, red, black, red hearts. So I'll end up using these for pockets and tags and the leftover scraps. I will put, I'm all about putting the scraps back into the journal so it's a no waste kind of journal. So I will end up, these are the scraps I have from cutting my signatures and I'm going to put those back in there so you'll have a no waste one. So that is it. That is the complete how I did that card journal. And, um, hope you guys like it and it wasn't too confusing <laughs> and I will see you soon. Thank you.